Praise the good Lord. Turn with me please to Matthew chapter 5. You brought your Bible this morning to Matthew chapter 5 in the Word of God. Let me begin by saying today that worship is how you handle yourself in the presence of the King. Worship is how you handle yourself in the presence of the King. And I know that I don't have to take much time this morning to explain to this congregation that God is worthy of our worship Amen. this morning. Amen. For all that God has wrought in our lives, for all that Jesus has done for us, He is worthy to be praised today. Yes. God is a spirit, Jesus said in John 4, 24, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. We have rooms over our heads. We have health to be here today. If you're saved by the grace of God, God has blessed you richly in so many ways. Time and our, our vocabulary would fail us this morning to tell of the goodness of God. But let's note the fact this morning that God is worthy to be praised and worship is how you carry yourself and you handle your life in the presence of the King. So with that said, I want to begin reading in Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 1. Thank you for standing as we honor the Word of God here today, if you're able. Matthew chapter 5, verse number 1. And seeing the multitudes, He went up into a mountain, and when He was set, His disciples came unto Him. And He opened His mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. And Sheila, this is what we were talking about when you came in this morning. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Correctly read, that's the first 16 verses of the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5. Please bow with me at this time in a moment's word of prayer. God, we need your strength and touch today. Help us, dear God to speak the word that's needed in this place. God, speak through us. Lord, it's my desire to decrease, that Christ would increase. Let that be the desire of each person here today. We thank you, God, for salvation through and by the Lord Jesus Christ and His shed blood and faith in His finished work. We thank you, God, for your church. We thank you, God, for your word that tells us how we should conduct our lives and lays down the government of the church. I pray, God, your will be done here as it is in heaven today. We love you, Lord. Forgive us, God, of our shortcomings and help us, God, to meet together here in one mind and one accord and lift up the blessed name of Jesus that those who are lost and unsaved may desire the salvation that's found only in Him. And we'll praise You and thank You. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And you may be seated in the presence of God here today. 
Worship unto God. That's how you handle yourself in the presence of the king. And we know from reading the Word of God that uh, this man called Jesus, he is the King of kings, he is the Lord of lords. He's the same one who said in John chapter number 14 and verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He is our King today. If we are children of God, we acknowledge the kingship and the lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in these verses today, in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, verses 1 through 16, we see uh, the Lord Jesus Christ describes the character and the behavior that reflects a lifestyle of worship unto God. We've made it a point here already to establish this morning that worship is how you handle yourself in the presence of the King. And that's what Jesus is talking about here in these verses that we read today. The characteristics uh, that establish a lifestyle of worship unto God. You see, worship is not something that takes place on Sunday morning. Worship is not something that takes place, uh, you know, five or ten minutes in the morning when you wake up and, and you get out of bed. Worship is not something that just takes place when you get along in your prayer closet. Worship is not something that just takes place once or twice a week. You see, worship is a lifestyle. Worship is how you handle yourself in the presence of of the Most High God. When we come to church on Sunday morning and on Sunday night and on Wednesday night, we are worshiping God when we assemble together. We are worshiping God when we sing the songs of Zion. We are worshiping God when we pray. We are worshiping God when we give our testimonies. We are worshiping God when we preach and we hear the preaching. We are worshiping God when we give. All of these are aspects of worship unto God. But that's not all that it is. You see, worship is a lifestyle, my dear friend. Worship is how you carry yourself in the presence of God. Once you become a child of God and you are saved by the matchless grace of King Jesus, you enter into His presence. And how many of you know today that when you truly enter into the presence of the Savior, you'll never be the same? Amen. I said when you truly enter into the presence, when you truly meet Jesus Christ, you will leave His presence a changed individual. But Amen. not when you leave His presence per se, because you carry His presence with you through the Spirit of God. When you meet Jesus Christ, you're, you're going to be a different person. You're not going to be the same old person that you always were. You're not going to be the same sinful individual that you were before you came into contact with the king. You're going to be a different person. And you will begin to see this world and everything that takes place in this world from the king's perspective. You see, just a moment of testimony from my personal life. I was saved by the grace of God at the age of 26. Prior to the age of 26, when I was a lost man, I saw this world from the perspective of a lost man. I did not know Jesus Christ as my Lord. I was not saved. I was bound for hell. And I saw this world through the eyes of a lost individual. And I want to tell you here today, there was no hope in that. There was no hope in that. There was fear in that perspective. There was anxiety in that perspective. You see, I knew what my destination would be if I were to die and leave this world as a lost man. But when I was saved in late July 2001, for lo now, coming up on 17 years, since the day that Christ saved my soul, and thank God He made me a new creature. Hallelujah! I have seen this world through the perspective and the eyes of somebody who knows Jesus. You see, when you're saved by the grace of God, your perspective and how you see this world changes. You don't view this world through the eyes of a lost man or a lost woman anymore. But now you view the world through the eyes of of someone who's saved by the grace of God. And I want to tell you, it looks different. Amen. It looks different. It doesn't look the same. Now, uh, as, a, as a saved man here today, and those of you who are saved by the grace of God can testify to this fact, when you look at the world today, you see hope. Because you know Jesus Christ. 
There's no anxiety. There's no fear. That's not to say that we won't have those weak moments when these things crop up, but we know that there's hope in Jesus Christ and it's a hope that was not there when I was lost, broken and done without God. You see, Jesus Christ changes everything. Thank God He changes your perspective. He changes your destination. He changes the way you walk and talk in this world. Now that we know Him, we're walking by faith and not by sight. Amen. Praise His name here today. So everything looks different from the King's perspective. And it will forever be different. It will forever alter the way that you view life when you know Jesus. Aren't you glad that this salvation is not just a temporary thing, hallelujah, but it will forever alter the way that you view this life and this world and everything in it when you know Christ. I think about Esther. Back in the Old Testament, I've been doing some reading in the book of Esther. Esther, the Bible tells us that she prepared for a year to meet the king. Because she knew, my dear friend in the house of God this morning, that when she came into the presence of the king, for good or for bad, she was going to be a changed individual. She knew that when she came to meet the king, her life was going to be changed, and it would be changed forever. She would no longer be the same woman that she was after she met the king than she was before she met the king. And my dear friend in the house of God today, it's the same with you and I. When you meet Jesus, you'll be changed forever. The Bible tells us how that Esther prepared for a year for her one night with the king. She had no guarantee in the Word of God that there would be a second night with the king. She had one night. No matter what the outcome, she'd never be the same again. So Esther prepared. And the Bible tells us that she prepared and it teaches us that she got to work on that queenly demeanor. And after she met the king for that one night, she continued with her queenly demeanor and the way that she carried herself through this world. She was a different individual. You see, for the child of the king, Worship is not just something that happens on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. It's not just something that happens when you come down to the house of God. But it is a lifestyle, my dear friend. Worship is how you handle yourself in the presence of the King. And that means that we're going to act like King's children wherever we go. And whatever we do, we're going to act like King's kids. I'm glad to be a child of the King this morning. I'm glad that His royal blood is flowing through my veins today. Thank God if you're saved this morning, you are a child of the King. We are King's kids. Amen. We need to act like it. Wherever we go, whatever we do, not just once or twice a week, but at all times, we carry ourselves like children of the King. No matter what our circumstances are. We preached here last Sunday morning. We hit on it again last Sunday night about the trials and the troubles that we face in this life. But you know, no matter how bad it may seem like it is for you, we need to carry ourselves through that circumstance as if we're a child of the King because you are if you're saved by the grace of God today. No matter what your circumstance is today, we need to live like a child of the King because the King abides in us through the presence of the Spirit of God. Aren't you glad that you'll never be alone in this life if you know Jesus and you're saved by the grace of God? You're never alone. Yes. Amen. He goes with you yes. wherever you go in this life. I'm reminded of the promises in the Word of God where Jesus said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I'll go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. So I'm glad this morning, my dear friend in the house of God, that we have the abiding presence of the King through the indwelling Spirit of God that dwells within believers today. And I'm never alone, though others leave me, others forsake me. He'll be right there. He'll be right there. He said He'd never leave me. He'll never forsake me. He'll never leave nor forsake you if you know Him today. Because the King abides within us. Have you ever considered this today in the house of God, my dear friend? We're talking about worship this morning. 
And how that worship unto God is a lifestyle. And how that worship is how you carry yourself in the presence of the King. And God is sending us a message this morning to remind us that we worship God wherever we go. Why is that? Well, we have the abiding presence of the Spirit of God that dwells within us. Have you ever stopped to consider that because of the indwelling presence of God, we carry with us the presence of the King. Therefore, we are to worship God wherever we go and whatever we do. Would you agree with that this morning? Yes. Amen. Therefore, every moment, think about it. Every single moment of your life, my dear friend, in the house of God today, is an opportunity for you to worship God. We don't have to look for opportunities to worship God. We don't have to let it bottle up until we get to church on Sunday morning. If you're saved by the grace of God, you have the presence of God abiding in you. Every opportunity of your life is an opportunity for you to worship God. Amen? It's who we are. You see, worship is not just something we do. It's who we are. I tell people often, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not a pastor because that's what I do. It's who I am. You can't separate. You can't separate. This, this is not just something that I do. This is who I am. And worship for the child of God is not just to be something that we do, but it's who we are. We were created to worship God. We were created to fear God and to keep His commandments. Uh, amen. And our lives should be a lifestyle of continuous praise and continuous worship uh, to the King. Yeah. Amen. Matthew chapter 5. Jesus describes the character of of the king's children. We read in your hearing this morning how that the Lord said, blessed are the poor in spirit, the king's children. They're going to be those who are poor in spirit. They're going to be those who mourn. And when he's talking about mourning, he's talking about mourning over the sin that's in this world today. My dear friend, that should be our, our response when we look around this world and we see the sin that's raging in this world today. That should cause you to mourn over that sin. Jesus says, blessed are they that mourn. He goes on to say, blessed are they uh, who uh, shall uh, uh, be persecuted for righteousness' sake. Blessed are the meek. And on and on we can go. These are the people who exhibit the characteristics of the king. They are the king's children. And Jesus sums it all up in verses 15 and 16 when He tells us you should let your light shine. We need to be people today who let our light shine. Don't hide it under a bushel, but let your light shine. Don't hide it under the bed somewhere. Let your light shine. Don't hide it uh, uh, you know, under a candlestick. Put it on the candlestick. Put it on the hill. Let it shine so that men might see our good works and glorify ourselves. No, but glorify the Father which is in heaven. You see, that's what it's all about. We're not out to seek glory. We're not out to seek praise. We're not out for a popularity contest. We're out to glorify God. We're out to worship the King. We're out to lift up the name of Jesus. We're out, thank God, to worship Him. Why? Because He's worthy to be praised today. I don't know about you in the house of God this morning, but I sure do appreciate the way Jesus sums it all up when He says, Let your light so shine before men that men might see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You don't get the glory. I don't get the glory. We don't deserve it. Jesus does. So that's what a lifestyle of worship is all about. As children of the King, everything that we say and everything that we do reflects on Him, whether it's good or bad. Everything we say, everything we do, every phone call we make, every post on Facebook, it all reflects Him. Whether it's good, 
whether it's back. You see? So I want you to ask yourself this question this morning. Is my daily life a continuous act of worship before the King? Am I somebody who's just waiting for a good church service to worship the King, or is my life a continuous act of worship? Regardless of where I am, regardless of what I'm going through, I spent all day long yesterday in the bed sick. I lost a whole entire day yesterday. I did nothing but writhe in anguish and pain yesterday. But even though those were my conditions and my circumstances yesterday, I understand that even in the worst of times, my dear friend, that my life is to be a continuous act of worship unto the King Amen. and praise unto God no matter where I am or what I'm going through. I have to ask myself this question. Am I drawing people to the King? Ask yourself that question. Are you drawing people to the King? Are you being faithful to God? Is your life an ongoing offering of worship unto the King, to the King of Kings? Because I want to say this this morning, my dear friend, the house of God today. When we're in the will of God, when we're living like we need to be living, when we're worshiping God, when we're praising God, when we're focused on Him and not focused on this or that one or the other, when we're truly focused on Him and we're living that life of continuous praise and worship unto God, what's going to happen, my dear friend, is that's going to spill over onto the life of someone else. Because if we've not looked around lately, there are people in this world right here in Kingsport, Tennessee in 2018 who are lost without God. They're on their way to a devil's hell if God doesn't intervene and save them. And they need to see somebody who's living a life of faithfulness and worship unto God. They need to hear from people who are children of the King and that are exhibiting this lifestyle that is characteristic of someone who lives a life of continuous worship, worship to God. They need to see somebody who knows that they need to conduct themselves in this fashion in the presence of God. I'm glad today that I am a child of the King this morning. I'm glad today that the blood... You see, his, his royal blood, if you're saved, like the old song says, it flows through your veins. Yes, oh yes, I'm a child of the King. His royal blood is flowing in my veins. I'm glad to be saved by the grace of God today. Let me say this to you, my dear friend. If you're here today and this terminology or this idea of being a child of the King is strange to you, if this is foreign to you, and you know beyond the shadow of a doubt here today that you are not saved. And you know because the Spirit of God has spoke to your heart and revealed to you that you are in a condition that is lost. You're on your way to hell. You've got unrepentant sin in your life. The Bible teaches us clearly that there was a man called Jesus who came down to this world. He lived a perfect, a perfect life from cradle to grave. He went to the cross as a perfect sacrifice for the sins of many. And whosoever shall call upon His name, whosoever shall repent and believe the gospel, shall be saved. Amen. For God so loved the world, the Bible said, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So if that's you today, my dear friend, and you know that you're lost and you're sitting in the house of God lost today, the good news is you don't have to die lost. You don't have to leave this place lost. You don't have to die and slip off into eternity not knowing God, but you can come to Christ today. You can look to Christ and live. You can put your trust in Christ alone and be saved by the marvelous, matchless grace of God. And it would be my plea 
this morning, my dear friend, that you would repent and believe the gospel. Don't leave this place in a lost state today. Trust Christ and look to Him. And you'll find Him to be a perfect Savior. And then you could carry on with the rest of your life as a continuous act of worship to the God who loves you, to the God who saved you, to the God that's coming back for you if you know Him in the free pardon of sin. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we love you today. Oh God, let our lives be a life of continuous worship unto you. God, I pray today that if there's people among us today to whom the Spirit of God is reaching out and speaking to through this word that was spoken today from Matthew chapter 5. I pray, Lord, that you draw them by your Spirit. May they come, God, and lay their burdens down. We have an altar ready right now for whosoever may stand in need of prayer, for whosoever needs to have a little talk with Jesus. This altar is open, dear God. And we trust God as this response comes this morning. We know, Lord, that you're in control of it. And it's going to be exactly what you'd have it to be. Lord, for some, it may be a response unto salvation. Some may reject it, God. But we know, God, that regardless of what happens, you are the one who's in control today. And my prayer today is, God, that you'll be glorified in this service here this morning. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. If you're able, we'll ask you to stand with us today. And if you need to pray, this offers up. Will there be others this morning? We'd like to come before God in humble prayer. have opportunity to do so right now. Will there be others today? We plead with you, child of God, if you have burdens, if you have concerns, Jesus said, cast them on me, for I care for you. And my dear friend, who may be here today unsaved, please turn to Christ today. Bless you, sister. Will there be others who need to come?